Hello everybody, welcome to another video and welcome to part four of the Power Mac G5 Hackintosh build. So we're very much getting to the business end of this series now. We've built our machine, we've got everything working 100% perfectly as a PC, but it's not quite a Hackintosh yet. So in this part, we are gonna be whacking a fresh copy of Apple's latest and greatest iteration of OS X, El Capitan, on our G5. As a disclaimer, just before we get into the guts of this video, uh, this is by no means a tutorial. This is what I did myself to get OS X on my machine. And uh, as you all know by now, Hackintosh, and there are so many different variables, hardware and software wise, um, and it makes pretty much every everybody's situation unique. So um, by all means use this as, as a rough guideline, but don't really take what I'm saying or doing as gospel. With that said then, what are we going to need to get OS X installed on a G5? Well, firstly, we're gonna need an eight gig or larger USB stick. If I was you, I'd go out and get a 16 gig just to be on the safe side. But um, as of the time of recording, eight gig, you can just about get away with it. And secondly, in order to set up the USB stick, we need to grab hold of a machine that already has access to OS X, be it a genuine Mac, another Hackintosh, or even a normal PC with OS X running a virtual machine. Um, in our case, we're gonna be using a 2007 MacBook Pro. That's pretty much it then, guys. Without further ado, let's get on with it. So before we can even think about touching the G5, we need to set our USB stick up. We need to download a copy of El Capitan from the Mac App Store, as well as the latest version of Unibeast and Multibeast from TonyMacX86.com. After those three downloads complete, we can go ahead and pop into Disk Utility and format the USB stick ready for the G5. Unlike Chameleon, Clover requires the USB stick to be formatted as a GUID drive, as opposed to MBR. So after making sure that the drive is also set to Mac OS X Extended Journaled, we're ready to open Unibeast. Unibeast, as simple as ever, is a little application that takes you through the step-by-step -step process of setting up your USB stick for a Hackintosh. The only real thing to note here is that I had to choose the legacy version of Clover for my install. For whatever reason, even though I have a UEFI capable motherboard, it simply refuses to boot into the UEFI version of Clover. At the end of the day though, it doesn't affect functionality, so it's no real biggie. Unibeast then did its thing, which took around 20 minutes, and after copying the Multibeast application onto the USB stick, we are ready to install OS X on our G5. After plugging the USB stick into the G5, turning the machine on, and mashing the F12 key, we're into Clover. The only boot flag I used to boot into the installer was dash V or verbose mode, just in case something crapped out during the boot process. Luckily though, it booted up perfectly first time. And now we're into the installer, all we have to do is open up disk utility and format our SSD for OS X. Then we can follow the install process just as we would on any normal Mac. The install took about 15 minutes for me, but of course it ultimately depends on what drive you've got in your system. Now that the install is completed, we need to reboot the system and boot back into our USB stick as Clover isn't installed on our SSD yet. This time I decided to fly solo with no boot flags whatsoever, and incredibly, it's 100% stable as it is. I haven't had this G5 crash or even freeze on me once since installing OS X. And here we are on the desktop. Now it's time to open up Multibeast and get all of our drivers installed. For Clover, again I chose Legacy as my motherboard doesn't play nice with UEFI. For audio, I chose the Realtek ALC887 driver. In miscellaneous, I decided to check the fake SMC plugins, and although I don't use Ethernet on my Hackintosh, I installed the Realtek network driver anyway. And for the system definition, I chose iMac 14.2, as it's a Haswell-based machine running a different version of the exact same processor that we've got in our G5. So after Multibeast finishes installing the drivers, it's once again time to reboot the G5. This time though, without the USB stick. Here we are then, booting without the USB stick, straight from the SSD. We've got a timer in the corner and we're going to see how quick this thing boots up. This clip was recorded a couple of hours after the last one you just saw, and in that time I basically just copied all my apps and data over and uh, fiddled around in Clover to get boot times down to a minimum. One thing to bear in mind with Hackintoshes as well is that before the computer can start loading the OS, it has to go through the bootloader. So when you see that, a time of 22.81 seconds, that is absolutely ridiculous. And that pretty much wraps it up, guys. Our Power Mac G5 Hackintosh is now sat in its new home, running a fully functioning copy of OS X El Capitan. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Look out for part five coming very, very soon. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.